All right, 12 o'clock on a game day. The Edmonton Oilers taking on the Arizona Coyotes tonight. It is the uh, oil stream presented to you by Boston Pizza. They got their playoff menu now available, and I'm uh, pretty sure Norman at Combine tried all of it earlier oh my today. God. My God, did you see that, Tommy? I did see that. That's impressive. You know what? Norm called that, too. He said he was going to do it on Friday when I saw him down at the uh, the Hudson's on Bourbon Street when he came down with Trace and uh, Brody. So not I should not be surprised, but uh, Norman, a combine never ceases to amaze me. So this is what he picked up. It's the Boston Pizza playoff menu items. He's got the half-square-footer pizza with Bandera bread and then spicy chicken pizza with pineapple. Gross. Sorry, you're not mixing in pineapple on me. The, jala- the, the jalapeno popper dip. With cactus cuts, that's a spicy. That's a spicy meatball right there. And then uh, he had a Coke Zero to keep it healthy too. So that's yeah, a okay. that's a nice little lunch right there. Nice little lunch. Norman Combine advertising works. Boston Pizza. Get that playoff menu for all of the uh, playoff games just around the corner. We do have to talk about this briefly. I don't know if you uh, saw it today, but uh, Alley Cat and Sobies are teaming up to put the six o'clock or logger on special, starting on the eighteenth, I believe. Yes. And Let's it'll be twelve ninety nine for a four pack. Huge. Which is just amazing. Huge. Start, starts on yeah, April eighteenth and then we'll run for the uh for the playoff run. And it's twelve ninety nine. So if you're looking for that playoff beverage, you're not gonna find a better tasting beer at that price. It's impossible. Twelve ninety nine at all of your Sobies and Safeway liquor locations. And we we're talking off the air today. And this is a big one. This is this is crazy. Like our relationship with Alley Cat has been going extremely well. But yep. since we launched the six o'clock or lager at the end of November, it has been the highest selling Alberta craft beer at all Sobies and Safeway Liquors. Like number one craft beer in the province for all of Sobies and Safeway Liquors. So that's uh it's amazing. If you, but you, like it's not gonna become the best selling beer, craft beer in Alberta. Just because we're like, hey, it, it, it's our beer. It's because it's delicious. Like, it if other good. people are in and get it, you're going to be like, damn, this is a really good beer. And we haven't even got the beer season yet. So we're right around the corner on it. It's time. It's time to get going. So, yeah, huge news there for the 6 o'clock or lager, buddy. Just great news. Big big thank you to everybody. Like, our nasties, everybody that watches and listens because they're pumping the 6 o'clock or lager, and we appreciate it. The Alley Cat for – teaming up with us first of all and then providing a phenomenal beer that is crushable and i know we say that that is the motto of the beer but it it legitimately is and um this thing has been awesome and then the other thing too you guys are doing beer of the week with uh scott and old red beard gets to be the one that brings in the good news it's all I sunshine know. and happiness around that guy he is good people through it through so when I, when I was watching this morning and He's like, we're doing the twelve ninety nine four pack six to go for the playoffs. I was like, Scott, you are everybody's angel right now. <laughs> that's that's just a good sitch all all around. So I absolutely love it. And again, big thank you to everybody that's supported it because this is fantastic. And let's see what the playoffs in the summer brings, Dusty. Because yeah. I mean, uh, beer is expensive, and at least we can uh, and Alley Cat and Sobies can partner up and make it a, a little bit more. Uh, tolerable and easier to uh, to pay for uh, for for knocking down the price a little bit. So that's that's a huge win for everybody. Yeah, great news there. So uh, get ready on, on April eighteenth. That begins twelve ninety nine. And I know Scott was saying they've told all of their locations, especially the ones in Edmonton and our surrounding area, to load up. So uh, be ready for that six o'clock or logger on special twelve ninety nine for the playoffs at Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Tommy, we can hear the pucks banging around behind you. What's going on down uh, the rink? Yeah, soon to be Salt Lake City Coyotes just finishing up their morning skate. Um, yeah, and then the alumni are on right after. So as soon as we're done, Dusty, I have to scoot down there and get my ass into my gear and get a little skate in. So it's going to be fun, but I, I'll just start with this. Like, I know we get excited about all the juicy news. Frank started it on, what was it? Wednesday. And then, you know, all, all the other big dogs got on board. Pagnata got in there, uh, Drager, CJ, uh, everybody's talking about LeBron, obviously about the, the move. And then the, the tone went from, what is this guy talking about? You know, in regard to what Frank brought up, So by the end of the day, we've got a statement from Bill Daly where he's basically saying that they're looking to move the team. And then 
you know, we get excited about it. We're like, goodbye, coyotes. Finally, the desert dogs are dead. And good riddance, this and that. Um, being around them today, around the locker room, talking to their broadcast. I just talked to Matt McConnell, their TV play-by-play guy. Just talked to their PR guy, Jeff, and uh, their security guy, Jimmy. Uh, you're looking at the, the equipment managers, the training staff, all of that. They're defeated, man. The, this this is hurting them. Like, And I think that gets lost in all of this. Um, like literally right before I came up to Lowe's here, I was talking to Matty McConnell, who's been with the broad, uh, on the broadcast team with the Yotes fight, I think like almost since the beginning. And Bob Heathouse on the radio side, Heater has been there forever. It, it's rattling them. And and the, the, the word that has popped up the most is disappointing. And, you know, just how the situation has unraveled to this point, uh, how it couldn't be a situation where they made it work in the sixth largest market in the United States, a city of six, pardon me, a metro population of six million people. There is a, a, a decent hockey community there that has built up over 25 plus years. Um, how time and time again, they just couldn't get it right. And, and so for them and, and the true hockey fans in, in the Valley down in Phoenix, uh, this is pretty damn sad. And, and you know what? I was caught up in the emotions of, oh, my God, they're finally moving. Like, good riddance. I was one of, I'm guilty of it. And then talking to Matt, Jimmy, and, and Jeff, and it's sad, man. And, and we're going to hear from Clayton Keller, Lawson Krause, and then Andre Tourigny is going to talk about it as well. So they're going to finally talk about it. Uh, and then there was some clarification too, Dusty, because I know in Vancouver the other night there there was some accusations and, and the presser was cut short and this and that. And nobody had asked or even brought it up with uh, Coyote's PR where maybe it was a bit of a miscommunication from a media standpoint to be like, hey, we need to talk about this. So um, it, it's a stressful time and uh, sometimes things don't go as smoothly as you hope. So now we're going to hear from you know, people from the team uh, in regard to it. And it's just it, disappointing is the, the, the sense I get. And there's like, you could tell they're very deflated around around the room. So uh, unreal. This tough, is a tough spot for all the employees and everybody to be in. We were talking about it with Mike Johnson this morning on the Nielsen show. And, uh, you know, he was there for six years. And he said he went through like a bankruptcy, two ownerships. Yep. Like yep. they had three decades to make it work. Right, yep. it's, it's not like they had nine years and then like, hey, you guys are out. They had three decades to make it work, and even if they yep. were trending towards maybe eventually making it work, like I, I, I get it. You know, there's obviously needs to be some sympathy for these guys who have their lights uprooted or lose yep. their career because the team moves and all that stuff, or however, however it's going to work. But from an organizational perspective, man, you had your shot. <laughs> you had more than multiple more shots. than off. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, like so. Hey. I'll stand by what I said the other day. I was saying that, you know, the, the ownership is a joke. And, and, like, listen, that's harsh. I'll, I'll back that up. Like, this this new owner, uh, my my good friend, left the organization. He had been there for 10 years. And uh, he was under the guidance and tutelage of Rich Nairn, who had been with the Coyotes since they were in Winnipeg. Uh, he was a well-renowned and, and highly regarded PR guy in the NHL. And uh, my buddy was right there learning from the best and and he had to walk away from the organization because he said that the the way it was being run even compared to when they were under anthony barraway who you know had his flaws as an owner as well uh he just said i can't do it i i i can't i don't know what's going to happen next I, I have a young family to support and my buddy took a job with the pga of america and and you know he's looking at this and He's worried about his friends that still work for the organization, but at the same time, he goes, nope, not surprised at all. You can text us anytime, 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. Hit us up in the uh, the nasty chat here as well. We will get to the we will get to the Mark Stone news. Obviously, we'll go through there. I see Marco there saying, guys, maybe an EST whiskey next. Uh, well, we know what's coming next. We're launching the EST Birdie Juice, which is going to be a flavored vodka. We're teaming up with Strathcona Spirits to do that. should be out in uh, early May. We are looking for a label for it, and uh, I tweeted that out yesterday. I'll tweet it out again this afternoon. If you are a, a, a graphic designer, we are looking for a label for the EST Birdie Juice flavored vodka that's coming down the pipe for you as well. So be ready for that. Hopefully, uh, 
the Oilers can go on a deep playoff run. You can be diving into that birdie juice uh, throughout that. Uh, Mike in Thunder Bay texts in. Well, you know what? Before we get to uh, before we get to Mark Stone, because I, I know I'm seeing it. Like we're gonna get to the Mark Stone stuff. Yeah. Uh, as for the Oilers today, goes Tommy Connor McDavid. Quick little rip around. Not yep. gonna not gonna go tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Like. Yeah, it doesn't sound like uh, today he said probably not. And this was our first chance to talk to him since, you know, they announced he's day-to-day. Um, I, I would even have my doubts for tomorrow. Yeah? I would even have my doubts. For, just what, what for, you know? I know we had some people texting in the last couple of days. He needs to get to that 100 assists. Do it. Do it before Kucherov. I don't think that that is top of mind for him. I don't get the sense it is. When he does get into the lineup, probably next week, I'm assuming, Um he'll get it. Like, listen, this guy is going to be one of four or five guys with Kucherov about to do it as well. All time to ever accomplish the feat, which is amazing in its own right. Does not take away from, uh, you know, him not doing it first this season. So a couple of things came out of it. Like we watched him, you saw, I reposted uh, Gino got good video of it. Um, he, he looks like he's moving around really well. And I'm assuming, and you know, Chris Knobloch talking about it yesterday. He's like, if, this was the playoffs. He would probably be playing, but they're just resting it up. He said, A, McDavid did, that uh, he will be ready to go by playoffs, and, and he feels 100% confident in that. Uh, just needs some time to heal. The other thing, too, DVD asked him, he's like, was this a lingering injury or a new injury? And he's and it was weird because he's like, oh, a little bit of both. Um, so that, that maybe, maybe he just didn't want to admit. I think he was throwing up smoke and mirrors like, Somebody's been messaging me or, or at, at tweeting me on, on X uh, about something with his clavicle, and that's why he doesn't have torque on his shot. I saw, I saw I, that I, pop up on Twitter from somebody, too. Yeah. I, I asked about that to a few people in the organization, and they just said that would be news to them, and this, these are people that nothing really gets by. So, um, But, hey, who, who knows? I, I don't think that's the case, and... Um, We'll see, but I, I don't. He's not probably not playing tonight. Probably not playing tomorrow. Uh, again, he's a physical freak, and I mean that as a compliment. And uh, I'm sure by next week we'll be seeing him back in action. All right, your thoughts on all of this? Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. What about the rest of the lineup, Tommy? What else are they expecting? Tonight? Well, today was optional, so uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to be more or less the same. Carrick's out, so Ryan would get back in. Uh, Carrick got nicked up at the end of that game against Vegas. Uh, Stetcher in. Uh, for I believe it's CC, CC. who's uh, also a little bit nicked up, and then you got Calvin Pickard starting in goal. All right, so Stetcher will get in tonight. CC a little bit uh, time off. I've uh, been playing pretty well lately. Uh, McGee's is over in the nasty chat. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, let's hammer that thumbs up. As we've seen on the morning show the last little while, more likes you get. More views you get later on in the day, so let's hammer it out and push it out to some other people. So hammer that thumbs up if you're watching here on the oil stream today. Or if you're listening on TuneIn or on iHeart, uh, make sure you, uh, you fire those text messages over. McJesus says, if they lose tonight, no chance McDavid plays tomorrow. If they lose tonight, another game in hand gone. I don't, It all comes down to how much they feel like they want first in the division, Tommy. I don't know if that's a, yeah. I don't know if that's a big push still. Like. I don't know. Vancouver, I mean, tomorrow's game is going to be a big one against the Canucks, and uh, I'm sure they're going to want to make a statement like they did against the Golden Knights the other night. Probably the same type of feel and emotion, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, let, let's let's look at it right now. I'm just looking at the standings just to see where Vancouver is after that loss to Arizona the other night. So Edmonton's got two games in hand, four points four back. Points they back. play that game tomorrow. It's there. I mean, it's there, but I don't know if they're putting a heavy emphasis on winning the division. I don't. I don't get that sense. Like usually, you'll hear one or two guys kind of be like, "Yeah, we want to win the division," or that is one of our goals. And really, uh, the theme that has kind of popped up, and and from you know Chris Knobloch through to the veteran players, is play the right way, process, uh, eliminate, eliminate and minimize mistakes. So that I think is the focus: playing the right way and. Being ready for the postseason seems to be the the mantra. Um, if they win the division, fantastic. I'm looking at the 86, 87 Smite Division banner. It's nice. <laughs> time you time know? for a new one. Time for a new one. Yeah, I mean the last one they got that 05, 06 Western Conference champion one. There's room for a lot of banners up there. It's just too bad they haven't added any. So uh, we'll see. 
Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Zach to come setting up the Connor McDavid availability here. We'll we'll uh, give you a watch, give you a listen to that here as we uh, we work our way through the show today as well. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it sorts it out. Uh, Matthew says Canucks hold the tiebreaker because we all can't catch them on regulation wins. Uh, mm-hmm. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Let's get into uh, some of these. Mike in Thunder Bay says uh and it's a long one so uh Uh oh yeah let's uh let's get this though happy friday gentlemen color me shocked that mark stone is practicing today nobody in the (laughs) world could have ever predicted that he would be healed perfectly in time for the playoffs it's amazing it's amazing that every year he gets injured at just the right time to have a recovery period the exact length of trade deadline to game one of the playoffs it's a miracle I imagine Stone was in a lot of pain leading up to the deadline, but he and the team decided he could play through it to go on the LTIR at just the right time to get back in time for the playoffs. Imagine he was injured a week sooner. Amazing how they can predict injuries and recovery time accurately every single year. I read an idea today that if the player does not play after the trade deadline, they should be disqualified from the playoffs. Could that be a solution to the madness? Could it be that easy? Anyway, Coyote's last game ever in Evan tonight, so that's cool. That's uh, from Mike in Thunder Bay, who I think is a little bit triggered by Mark Stone practicing today. Uh, by the way, well there was done. somebody who texted in on the lock shop today and said they've seen the Oilers play the Coyotes at Rogers plays four times, and the Oilers have won every single time. So if you're looking to bet on something tonight, he goes, there's a trend for you. I've never yeah. watched them lose to the Coyotes, so you've got that going for you. Uh, we know people are going to be fired up here about uh, Mark Stone. Um, Tommy, it is... A heck of a coincidence that this is going to work yeah. out. Like you just knew, you just knew that he would be okay, uh, right in time for the postseason. And hey, we had Lawless on for the Rink Report on Tuesday, or we rolled it out on Wednesday. But I, I gave Gary the out. I'm like, if you don't want to talk about it, Gary, go for it. He's like, no, 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 we're going to talk about it. He goes, Mark Stone has a ruptured spleen or a, he had a lacerated spleen. He's like, the Coyote, or the Golden Knights are not going around cutting people's organs, everyone. Like, relax. So, okay, but we knew that they would massage it to time it right, to maximize LTIR. Every team in the NHL would do that. Um, The fact that it's the Golden Knights, everything that they've done in the past, with Mark Stone as well. Like, this this guy plays hard hockey. There's a pattern here, though. (laughs) There seems to be a trend. Like, come on. To... To Lawless's credit, like he's like every owner in the NHL has agreed to this, and they've signed off. And if they had a problem with it, one of them would speak up because the owners complain more than anybody uh, in the National Hockey League because they're all spoiled rich guys that worked hard for the money. Absolutely, some of them inherit it, sure, but um, they if they feel like there's a competitive advantage or something's unfair towards their team. These owners do not shy away from bitching about it. And uh, it sounds like there hasn't been any bitching in regard to Mark Stone. And But, yes, we knew that this would happen. When we saw the tweets coming out, I think it was Friedman who had it first. I just kind of rolled by. I was like, oh, there we go. Yeah. He's good to go. So, yeah, I mean, how how shocked are we really? Probably like zero per- Like if, if anybody didn't think this was going to happen, open up your eyes. Of course this was going to happen. Of course Mark Stone was going to return in time for the playoffs. And uh, now he's got uh, he's got like two weeks to ramp himself up and uh, be ready to go. So they'll get everybody else healthy as well, I'm sure. And uh, classic. Yeah. Classic. Hey, Hurdles, Hurdles made his debut too. What about that? Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, well, Hurdle looks like he needs about three weeks to kind of get up to speed. Because, <laughs> my uh, God. Yeah. He did not yeah. – he, he we haven't even talked – like, obviously, because the, yeah. the game was Wednesday, we haven't talked about it. But, I mean, I know Vegas is missing some bodies, but the yep. ones who were there could have tried, probably. Like, I thought, I don't know what was up with that team. Oh, I don't know. Like, you want to talk, you know, I talked about the mood around the Coyotes and then being disappointed and defeated and all that deflated. Um, the mood around the Golden Knights was uh, concern, not trepidation. That would be incorrect, but, like, questions certainly like wondering like oh is this group gonna be okay and and a lot like a lot of the theme that was happening on wednesday morning here at the rink was well they haven't punched their ticket and that was coming from uh bruce cassidy it was coming from the players uh lawless reiterated that and, and it's like there, there's kind of that well we haven't really done anything yet and 
I think that they're, there's, they're quietly worried. And, and Lawless, I think the indicator was when he was on the rink report, he's like, this team has played the most hockey out of any team in the NHL outside of maybe the Tampa Bay Lightning in the last couple of years. And he, it's catching up to them. Yikes, man. Yeah. Yikes. But, like, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They won the Stanley Cup last year. Championship teams know how to turn it on. Like, look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like, we kind of wrote them off. They didn't have a great regular season. Now they're pouring it on because it's that time of year. And, yeah, they've lost a bunch of pieces. But Golden Knights, in theory, I think could be the same way. And, and it's just it, it hasn't clicked yet or it's just not happening. I don't know if it's the injuries. I don't know if they're, they're out of rhythm or whatever. And then what, whatever we saw them do on Wednesday night against the Oilers, valid concern. Valid concern. Like, they didn't have a sniff in that game. I know. Edmonton. Very thorough win for the Oilers, which is great. You don't want to take anything away from the Oil. I thought they played excellent. No, I'm not taking anything. Edmonton played a very yeah. thorough game. But Vegas but just the didn't like. They didn't, didn't have it. They didn't look like they wanted to be there. Like it was, it was, I mean, it was wild. And, and bizarre, yeah. I mean, they're a team since starting 11-0-1. They have lost more games than they have won. So we'll see where. And Aiden Hill looked like a guy yeah. who would have been fourth or fifth on the depth chart. Heading into last season, like in his last two months, his save percentage yep. has been below 900. So now they've got Patrick Thompson. Patrick my ass. Yeah, take that, Matty Awanek. Hey, holy smokes. This is the Patrick Waugh. Come on. Oh, it's always going to come up. We're going to be we're gonna be making Aiden Hill, Patrick Waugh references with Awanek for the next decade. And it's going to be, he's, probably be in his, funny. He's in his office right now, like, Shaking dealing his head. with some organized, yeah, yeah. and he's snickering with like that little yeah, yeah. sly grin that he gets because he knows <laughs> that he's stirring the pot, even while not on the air. Uh, Coach Mike is in and says, "Guys, win three straight without ninety-seven would be a hell of a message to send to the rest of the league if they were to yeah. go tonight and tomorrow night without him, and they were to uh, clean sweep them." Um, that's a uh, that's a pretty good point. Speaking of Connor McDavid, Zachtikum, we're good to go. All right, let's hear what Connor McDavid had to say earlier today. Tommy down at the rink. I feel good. I feel good. Probably won't go tonight, but uh, yeah, I feel good. The uh, the five and seven, the back to back. How much does that play into it? If you were, if you guys weren't even playing until Sunday, would tonight not be an option? What was the math there? Uh, five games in seven days. Okay. The back to back. And all. Does that come into it, or is this just more of all about you two? Just want to feel. I want to feel good. I want to feel uh, at my best, and um, that's not. That's not the case tonight. We know that rest isn't something that you generally look for each year. It's about being healthy. Is it, is it always hard to, you know, to make maybe a big picture decision versus, you know, in the moment wanting to help out? I never want to miss games. I really don't. Um, it's frustrating. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we're after bigger things here. Um, you know, and and being healthy, everyone being healthy is uh, is priority number one. Does it make it a bit easier when you watch your team play as well as you did yeah. two nights ago? Yeah, it was great. I thought they played uh, they played really, really, really well, solid, in control the whole night. Um, you know, not uh, there was no stressful moments, so um, it was great. You've been on the bench for all of it, but <coughs> the biggest improvement for your team has really been your defensive play, five on five. Right? Like you, I think you're second best in the NHL for quite a stretch here. What, from even watching upstairs, what do you see that's been the biggest improvement defensively five on five? Um, well, I think we're we're just really aware of it. I think everybody is uh, everybody talks about playing defense, um, you know. But our room, you know, it's uh, it's all we really talk about. Um, you know, we want to be a tight checking team. We want to play that 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 simple game. Obviously, we got we got the players to uh, to open it up if we have to um, and play that offensive game. We can do both, but. You know, I think just the biggest thing for our group is just awareness, just, you know, being focused for the full 40 minutes, into the details, um, you know, little things, all the cliche things, but that's what defending is. It's, uh, it's awareness, it's focus, it's, it's being dialed in, and um, our group was that for the, full, uh, for the full game the other night. Carl, this injury, is this something that was nagging you or something that you picked up in the um, It's... Uh, that's a good question. Um, probably a little bit of both. Confident that you'd be able to get past it and not carry it into the playoffs. Yeah, very, yeah, extremely confident. Um, extremely confident that it'll it'll turn the corner quick and um, be ready to roll. Are you like day to day? Do you think like tomorrow's a possibility at all, or is that still too soon? Yeah, uh, we'll see. You know, we've really been taking it day at a time. Um, you know, we've been making decisions. Uh, 
day to day, and um, we'll cross that bridge tomorrow. Do you, uh, if, if getting your team ready to be playing its best hockey when the playoffs begin, that seems to always be the goal. Getting hmm. your mind set, getting your game set. Where do you think your team is with five games left? Um, you know, I really like where we're at. I thought, uh, you know, I think we've played some really good hockey the past three games. Um, you know, since our, our slip up there in, in, in Dallas, I feel like, um, you know, I feel like our game's been really good. It's been um, you know, where it needs to be. Um, with that being said, our group, there's always going to be, you know, line tinkering and there's always going to be um, that type of thing going on. So, you know, having set lines um, for our group has never really been... Um, the case, um, and especially now that you know, since adding um, you know Sammy and 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 uh, Enrico, um, you know we got depth and, and we got a lot of different combinations we can use, and I'm sure you'll see lots of different combinations along the way. It's a bit of a unique stretch drive because you have six games in the last nine days, so you can't get the gas the whole way because you have to conserve a little bit for the playoffs, but you want to maintain your momentum. So how do you kind of straighten? Yeah, we still got lots to play for coming on the stretch. And we keep saying that, um, you know. There's seating, there's positioning, there's all those types of things, all while maintaining, um, you know, a healthy group. Um, I'm not really a big believer in in, uh, in resting guys. Um, you know, with that being said, six games in, in nine days is a lot. So, you know, if we if we rest guys, that you know, that's uh, that's just the circumstances we're in. But um, you know, I think you want to be, you know, pedal to the metal, you know, foot on the gas. Um, you know, all the way to the end and, and, and into that game one. To what extent are you looking at possible opponents? Because there's sort of a two, three in that mix right now that you might be facing. Well, there's lots of different possibilities, lots of different outcomes. Um, we're just trying to make sure that our game is where it needs to be, and um, that's our main focus. All right, there you go. That is uh, Connor McDavid getting closer to a return. And uh, yeah, that was interesting when uh, DVD asked him that question about, like, is it, he's like, huh. It's almost like he's thinking, what should I say here? Yeah. Good question. Maybe a little bit of both. So, um, yeah, I thought that, I thought that response was, was kind of interesting. I also like the uh, like you're going to see just who they are. The how it's how they work. Line line tinkering, right? Like it's like we talked about mm-hmm. it all year long. That you're going to see different line combinations and, and things along those lines. Anything else you take away yeah. from uh, from uh, Connor today, there, Tommy? No, I mean, he was reluctant to do it. So <laughs> he's like, can I just go now? When he, he was coming off the ice, we're like, yes, come on, let's go. Let's get this out of the way. But uh, it's Connor McDavid, best player in the world. You need updates when you can. And uh, that was good to just hear it from him. But, uh, yeah, a little bit revealing about, you know, not worrying about um, having constant lines. And these guys in the room are used to having – the blender out all the time, game to game, scenario to scenario. So uh, maybe for some that are concerned about chemistry and this and that, to hear it from him kind of eases some of that stress that that might come from it. So that was interesting, and he just flat out admitted it. I mean, Chris Knobloch's been saying it for the last couple of weeks as well, and uh, you know, I, I don't think we should be surprised at this point anymore. All right, 780-218-9999, 780-218. 9999 is where you can get in. And of course, portions of the oil stream are brought to you by Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. And uh, Popeye's just recently launched their uh, Buffalo Chicken Wrap, which apparently is absolutely delicious. Buffalo Poutine, also an option now as well. So if you're looking for a bite to eat, we do suggest you go and hit up Popeyes and uh, Tommy, I was showing a little bit earlier on some of the other shows, but I can flip back and forth here between sponsors on this little thing here now. So it's what? It's, it's pretty sweet. So like, oh, it's Let's brought see. to you by Popeyes, and then I go, actually, the uh, oil stream is presented by Boston Pizza. And if you'd like to ride with the EST parlay today, slide on over and see our friends at Coolbet. And uh, hello, yeah, I've got that. Uh, I've got that set up right now. The Coolbet EST parlay tonight plus five fifty cool. five plus five fifty. I think it was. It was uh, dry subtle with a goal and an assist. And then points from just Nuge and uh, and Bouchard tonight, and the Oilers to win in regulation plus five fifty. So if you want to ride over that, you can find that with our partners over at Cool Bets. Uh, you know what? With what they did against the Golden Knights, there was a lot coming out of that game, Tommy. With with uh, like a dry subtle slides up, plays extremely well. What did you think of Dylan Holloway in that game? I know on the post game, a lot of people were all pumped and fired up about Dylan Holloway. Um, Good. How impressed were you with Dylan Holloway? Very. 
Nice. He's ta- he looks like he's about to take a step. Now it has to continue. He's going to get a chance tonight, probably tomorrow night. Um, I, I'm not ready to say, hey, you need to play this guy in the playoffs like some were jumping to on Wednesday night. But I understand that desire for him to be injected into the lineup, that youthful enthusiasm. He can play physical. He can add offense. He is not afraid to try things with the puck. It has bit him in the butt uh, before, but he's becoming more savvy as he becomes a, a seasoned pro, let's call him. He's not quite there yet, but he's getting there. Um, this is good. This is this is a prospect that you want to pop. And, you know, Wednesday night, he showed that he's starting to pop and, and at the highest level. So that's fantastic. So encouraging. Let's see more. Let's see it continue. Let's, let's see it snowball. And, and maybe he forces the Oilers' hand at, at having to keep him in the lineup. But I think that they're comfortable with not uh, having him in the lineup because they have veteran guys. Um, so this is a, a, a scenario that's playing out to be a good problem. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Do I like element? Am I poo-pooing Dylan, Dylan Holloway? No. Uh, I love elements of his game. I, I am tantalized by what his potential could be. And I just, you know, in this moment... I think that the orders still have a good thing going with him not in the lineup. And uh, if he can, you know, slide in seamlessly like he did on Wednesday night, even better. Yeah, like with the, the Holloway conversation is, like, I don't know how much better he can play right now than he played a couple of nights ago. I thought he was absolutely mm-hmm. outstanding. He was hard on the puck. Got the goal, obviously, with Aiden Hill just being out to lunch. Um, what, good. What, what does What would he have to do, do you think? To actually force their hand, because like we well, talked about it after, and like to me, what he accomplished—we did it on two guys yesterday. What he yeah. accomplished was knowing that if somebody gets hurt in the top nine, they're not bumping up somebody else in the fourth line. Dylan Holloway's right. going to get into that lineup. Yeah. Um, so that I mean, mission accomplished for him. I'm not yep. sure that would have been the case before that game. So that's great. Uh, there was a lot of discussion yesterday. I know I was tagged in a bunch of tweets about Matthias Yanmark versus Dylan Holloway, but. Like, what would he have to do to actually go in outside of an injury, do you think, come playoff time? Uh, I mean, yeah, he would, he, he'd have to keep adding to the offense, and he'd have to keep being, quote-unquote, around it and uh, tilting the ice and uh, not making mistakes in his own zone or in the neutral zone. Like, he would have to start to be a, a bit of a game-changer, if you will. So I think that is how he would have to force the Oilers' hand at not taking him out of the lineup. Now, if you, you looked at him and, and Matthias Janmark, like people were bringing up, like, is he probably a better hockey player offensively than Matthias Jan? Yep. No, no questions asked there. Like, I think that the potential, his ceiling, obviously higher than Matthias Janmark's. Dylan Holloway's not a penalty killer, though. Matthias Janmark's a penalty killer. Uh, that's important. One guy's played in the NHL for eight or nine years. The other guy's in his, what, second two and a half pro years. Like, that's where Janmark in this example, has the upper hand over a Holloway. But if Holloway keeps playing great, why, why do you take him out? So that's what's going to have to happen. He just Let's see what happens tonight, Dusty. Great opportunity for him to have a, another solid performance, build off of what he did on Wednesday. Maybe he gets in on the offense again. That's fantastic. And then, you know, if they keep David out for tomorrow, he's in again against the Canucks. Let's see. Tougher competition. Can he repeat it? Can he continue what he did? It'll be the same question. I think it's just a day-by-day, game-by-game situation for Dylan Holloway. If he starts to level out and uh, isn't as much of a factor and isn't as noticeable, then they pull him out of the lineup. But they're not going to bump a fourth liner that's on the PK uh, for Dylan Holloway unless they really feel like what he's bringing to the table is is worth it. You know what I thought was uh, really – I was so I got tagged in – a back and forth yesterday on. on oh, Twitter. those are the best. Matthias Janmark and Dylan Holloway and their expected goals for numbers and, and that stuff. And I, the guy even included, and it wasn't to me. I was just happened to be tagged somewhere in the conversation. But it was. You know, you it, can leave those conversations, right? Even when you're like tagged? Yeah. You like, can leave the conversation. Oh, I've done that many oh, times. Okay. I've never done that. Anyway, I was kind of amused by it because Bruce McCurdy circled into the mix because uh, Bruce- the guy was laying out that. Uh, Dylan Holloway's expected goals against on the penalty kill are better than Matthias Janmark's expected goals against on the penalty kill. And Bruce okay. McCurdy like slid in with a hammer and he goes, Holloway's 
killed six minutes in penalties in his career. And I was just like, yeah, that is the definition of a small sample size, sir. So that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. But, but if this is a very encouraging thing. And you know how playoff runs go. I mean, somebody's yep. going to get banged up along the way, and Dylan Holloway has just proven to everybody that once he gets in, maybe he does stay in. Like, maybe, maybe somebody gets hurt, maybe Holloway gets in, and he plays so well that they're just like, they're not going to full on Wally Pip this guy, but, you know, you stay in until you have a bad one, and then somebody else gets to slide back in. Sure. So, yep. Uh, let's get to a uh, let's get to a few of your your thoughts on this seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine or hit us up in the uh, the nasty chat as well. This is an interesting thought from uh, Robin. Guys, he'd have to be better on both sides of the puck than Fogel. So he's probably viewing the top nine as who are the options that could come out if need be, and it's not going to be Henrique, and it's not going to be Evander Kane, and come playoff time, it's not going to be Corey Perry. I wouldn't think. So then you're yeah. looking at Fogel, but Fogel's been so damn consistent all year. Like I don't see Fogel. I don't. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say I see Fogel being a major difference maker come playoffs. But Fogel's been so consistent that I don't see his game getting to the point where yeah. he's coming out of the lineup. Tommy, I don't even think that would be a conversation that's had. I don't even think there's, that's a non-starter, in my opinion. But yeah. What say you? Listen, yeah, yeah, like veteran guys, Dusty always get the leg up over young of guys. Of course, they always. Should. I mean, unless you're rolling out a Stankoven or something with what he's doing right now, like that's going to be tough for a young guy in a lot of different spots. When you yep. built a, a group full of veteran guys, one of the oldest teams in the National Hockey League, it's going to be tough for Holloway to to get in there. Even if many people believe that he should already be in the lineup. Sure. Um, come playoff let's, time, I think you probably want some some veterans in those spots, which I don't. I'm not going to criticize. D Dusty, let's go down that road really quickly. Just like a quick exercise in this. Say hypothetical. Yes. Say Holloway continues to play really well, which is fantastic. Forces their hand, and and the coaching staff goes, okay, we can't take Holloway out because he's playing so good. But our only option is to take out a Connor Brown or a Matthias Janmark and put him on the fourth line because we have our top nine kind of set already. And then they, they put him in, and he's a fourth-line winger all of a sudden instead of a third-line winger, and his minutes go from 12 to 15 to 8 to, to 11 or something like that. And his role probably changes too with the type of minutes you expect from a fourth line and the way they generally play. I, I, I don't think you're getting the same impact. That, that This is, again, a hypothetical exercise, but I think that would affect it too. So it, it is interesting, and if he – Forces their hand, a great problem again. And uh, when you have a team full of great problems, dealing with great problems, good problems, you're probably in a good situation and talking about contending. Not a uh, not a bad spot to be in at all. Uh, we do, yeah, see, overtime winner over there. It says, inject a young guy at the right time in playoffs. Right? Remember, what's it? was Holloway not injected in the Colorado series? Like game remember, six. like yeah, oh, very, game four, right, pardon right, me. Game yeah, four. late in the in the Colorado series. I remember that he like, played like three minutes. Yeah, he he got in, barely played, but yeah, you got you got it. Now he's he's come a long way since then. Yeah, um, but I agree with overtime winner that you have to inject the young guy at the right time in the playoffs and in the right spot. And if it really hits, then you're like, we're golden pony boy. And if it doesn't hit, you're like, oh, we got these veteran guys that we can still kind of uh, kind of go back to as. Well, uh, yeah. we've got the keyword coming up for the EST flyaway to Vegas. Well, uh, you know what? Let's give you that right now. Let's get into that, and then we'll dive into some of this Broberg and Deherney stuff. Um, all right. Next chance after right now to get a keyword will be tomorrow on Hello Hockey. Uh, right now, it's a chance for you to qualify by texting 780-218-9999. We're going to give you this keyword. We are have two nonstop flights three nights accommodations, tickets to a Cirque show. Your your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly Y-E-G. Best of luck, everybody. The keyword that you'll text in right now to 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999 is VIP or VIP. VIP. Text, yeah. text VIP 
right now to 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. And if you are watching over on YouTube, hammer thumbs up for us as well. We're sitting at 69 right now, insert joke here. Um, but let's try to push that bad boy up to 100 today. There's many of you watching who haven't subbed. If you haven't subbed to the channel, definitely do that. But if you're not giving us a like yet, it doesn't cost you a thing and uh, helps us continue to grow EST. So uh, hammer that thumbs up for us today. We would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, your keyword one more time is VIP, and we'll certainly get to that. What are you looking at down there, Tommy? What's, what are you looking I'm, at down I'm looking at, well, the alumni are getting ready to go on. The Zamboni just finished up. I think Cass is playing today. I think I see Sean Brown, or it might be Steve McIntyre. I just, I, I know I'm probably going to have to keep my head up when I finally get out there. Do you, uh, do, do, you do the alumni here, skate guy. once in a while or what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, obviously some, like, former staff <laughs> are, are involved and get to go. And this year they extended that to me. Oh, yeah, Steve is here. Jesus Christ, he's a big man. I was going to say, how did you confuse <laughs> How did you confuse Steve McIntyre with anybody? Oh, That's my God. Wondering. Yeah, no, there he is. Big Mac attack. Uh, great group, by the way. Sparky Kolchiski, Heather Lefebvre, the, they're fantastic. So that's what I was looking at. Um, I did have something. What were we talking about right before the uh, the trip to Vegas? Well, we were, we were going to talk about we're going to talk oh, about Broberg and Darren. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're, and, and oh, tomorrow. We're gonna yeah, and tomorrow. Yeah, hello hockey. Yeah, a uh, great lineup tomorrow. We've got Dave Pagnotta as always, our hello hockey insider. Brian Burke, nice, is coming on, and uh, Stars GM Jim Nil. Beauty. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good lineup, buddy. Hello, hockey. It's all Belzy, man. Yeah, that Belzy, Belzy's the guy. He gets it all set. It he sets it all up, and he just has a great Rolodex of uh, contacts. And here we go. So it's going to be a great show tomorrow. Does it, does it have anything to do with these huge legs? We were we were the other day when he was on the hangout. I was talking with Rick. I'm like, look how big Belzy's legs are, like just tree trunks. And then we were talking about it somewhere, and somebody texted in. They're like, yeah, but he went to get like fitted for a suit with the the suit guys you guys have on Hello Hockey. Measure, yeah. They're like, it was a record. It was like a record size or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, uh, Richie and Jared over at Modern Measure inside the Edmonton Tower, great guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all the stuff that uh, they they get done for us. Um, they were measuring Belzy up. And Richie just looked over at Jared. He goes, 32 in the thighs for, for Belzy. And, and Jared's like, oh, my God. He's like, Belzy, <laughs> your, your legs are as thick as CFL and NFL players. Because yeah. a bunch of, like, I think Armando Sewell has gone there and a bunch of uh, CFL guys. And Belzy's right there with the same leg mass as those guys. And then uh, his calves were 19 inches. His calves, his calves were dusty. nineteen inches. Yeah, and and Belzy's a confident guy. He's a man about town. He's accomplished so much in his life. Um, but he went to Jared and and Richie, and he goes, guys, I, and it was like almost sheepishly. And I was like, what's going on here? And he goes, I uh, I want to get some jeans. And I understand you guys do custom jeans. I want to get back into jeans. <laughs> and I was like, what do you not have jeans? Like everybody's got, he's like, they don't fit me. He's yeah. like, I haven't worn jeans in years because I can't find them that fit. And they're like, yeah, we can make some jeans for you. So he was very excited about that. But just the way he said it, and I'm like, oh my goodness, he's got a big old hockey, but donk and then he's got the tree trunks, like football players, uh, massive, massive legs. And, uh, so I'm looking forward and great, great style, great uh, help from the guys at Modern Measure. So if you're looking to get in to some new stuff and it's not just suits too dusty, I'm getting like a, a jacket and uh, a shirt as well. Go, go see them at uh, Edmonton Tower. All right. And a big hello hockey tomorrow. Brian Burke, Jim Nell, Pegnata going to be on with uh, Belzy and Tommy and the next chance to uh, qualify for the EST Flyway to Vegas. We'll call a qualifier here in about five minutes. Uh, Tommy, lots to talk about Holloway getting up from the American Hockey League, uh, proving uh, proving uh, you know a lot of his believers that hey, look, this guy can play right now, so that's good news. What about Broberg? What's the uh, what's the latest here on Philip Broberg? Are we going to see Broberg against San Jose or Arizona next week? All right, so I did ask about this yesterday. Um, Broberg, it uh, he's very much in the plans in the future. Somebody texted into the nasty chat last show and they're like someone else is saying that they don't think Broberg he is very much in the plans for the future with the Oilers 
Uh, and then I was the only caveat being like, unless there's like a big trade that they can't say no to and they, they include him. So he's very much in the future plans of the Oilers. And uh, they do want to get Broberg in if they can before the end of the season. Uh, that's TBD to be determined. And then on the Deharnay situation, uh, you know, it's been back and forth for a while with Vinny. And um, somewhere around two-ish million is probably the ideal spot. Now, that that's probably we're looking at three years, maybe four. I know the player probably wants to maximize his contract and and get as much money as possible. But so, uh, you know, three four years, two-ish million. Uh, that's that's kind of where it's at right now. But like Shogger was saying, you know, now's not the time to be talking contract. Now's the time to focus on trying to. To get Walk down it, that yeah. big shiny trophy, yeah, yeah. Not for not a time for players to be talking contract, but certainly a time for us to be talking contract number with uh, with Deharnay. Where are you at on two mil? What do you think? Of, what are they get? Th- is that a player number yeah. or is that a team number? Like, because for me, two million would be the number that Deharnay would want. He can't possibly yep. want more than two million. I think I mean, this the thing body probably of work comes. Is, I think six seven D man. Yeah, like to me, this has to come in under two million bucks. I'm sorry. Like, I'm with you, yeah. but I I, th- I think you know he's gonna and his agent will try to to make it more than. Um, maybe that's where the what helps put it over the top is they give him an extra year or something like that. So that the longer term, you know, you get that uh, reassurance that you're going to be in the NHL unless you're playing so poor and you get bought out or sent down. I don't think that's going to happen, but yeah, I I thought it'd be somewhere you know initially around like 1.5. Maybe like 1.75. Probably the orders would be okay with that, but um, yeah, somewhere in the two-ish range, three, four years. That's ultimately, I think, where it ends up. Just you know, having those discussions with some people, and um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where it's at right now. The intention is to bring him back. They like him, and uh, we'll see where it goes after. That'd be pretty fast if he gets if he gets two mil. I think Vinny Dayarne has got to be pretty darn happy. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, yeah I, think I agree. He, I think he'd have to be pretty happy with uh, that one. Uh, all right, you can continue to hit up. This one's in Steinbeck. The nemesis says 1.75 per five years to get Ooh. him uh, under under 2K. So, yeah, or under uh, under two, 2 million bucks there. 780-218-9999. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it starts out. Not the end of the world, but uh, just something to... Uh, to discuss as well. Calvin C says kind of along those lines, is it just a given guys that Fogel has priced himself out for re-signing next year? No. I mean, that all comes down to Fogel. No. I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. know if teams are lining up to get Fogel. They might view that. Hey, Fogel's a decent fit in Edmonton. So we don't know if he's going to be a fit with our guys here. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he would have, I don't think they would have priced him out. Like, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I did think about that. It's not like I'm not poo pooing that thought because I have had it cross my mind as well but ultimately no like he's he's having a career year which is great he's kind of in the prime of his career now and uh we know he's a 30 point ish this year potentially 40 if he gets a couple more he's got 37 through 77 games he's pretty reliable he's consistent obviously confidence goes a long way because there were times last year where he was being healthy scratch because his game wasn't there he minimal impact but when he's feeling good he can be a, a solid player so I even thought at one point he, did, he was going to get a haircut in his next deal, but if he stays in and around the same money for a couple more years and the orders are willing to give it to him, I would think he'd consider it because he's got a pretty good spot here. All right, Tommy, you go play hockey. I'm going to get to the Woo! qualifier, and then uh, you get the, uh, a little pregame action later on tonight. All right, sounds good. The boys are just warming up. I'm very excited. Uh, here we go. Just hope that Steve McIntyre doesn't rip my head off. <laughs> All right, have fun, buddy. There you go, Tommy yeah. Gazzola. Later on, uh, later on tonight, we'll have your pre and post game show. We'll call a qualifier here right away as well. I mean, I, I just, I know people love Vinny. I get it, but you're not giving Vincent Deharnay four years, two million bucks. You're giving Vinny Deharnay two years, one point five million bucks, and then seeing where it goes. I mean. You like him, but it's it's a it's a six seven D man. He's a six seven guy. I don't think you can commit five years of two mil to him. I, I the the play the way he plays 
the max you'll probably get in a year. And I like them. I like them. This is just me as like a looking at the organization and how you're going to pay people. Like the most Deharnay, Deharnay is never going to be like a three point five million dollar guy. I don't think. Like I think he probably settles in right where he is. He's a third pairing guy. Uh, kills penalties for you, which he's become he's become much better at. Uh, but I, I don't see him getting a deal that starts with a two. I just yeah, like Zedmo, three years, one point six, something along those lines. Like that's what I would think. Yeah, you want to go three years at one point five, one point six? Sure, there's some cost certainty there for you. He's going to make over three million dollars to play hockey, which would be great. Um, but hey, I just I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I, if DeHarnay gets like a three or four year deal at two million bucks per, his agents. Genius. I think you have to uh you have to like that one. Uh Hampton Stevenson says, I love Vinny, and two million isn't a major overpay, but with the Oilers upcoming cap situation, McDavid Leon Bouchard, they'll need every single bit of cap space. These five hundred K to two hundred twenty five K overpayments can add up and handcuff the team. Rob is in and says, Vinny's third pair, one point five max. Lots of replacements out there for one to one point five million, which there would be. Like if Vinny Deharnay is saying to the others, listen, if if I, I want two mil, then you say, Well, we can find a right shot third pairing guy for one point four. So I don't know if like there, there's not a lot of like a bargaining chip for Vinny's just third pair guys don't have much power when it comes to negotiations. That's just the way it's always been. It's once again, no slight, no shot to DeHarnay, but he's not sitting down and being like, here's my number. <laughs> like, that's not happening. He's a UFA. I mean, if you're the Oilers and Vinny says he's going to test unrestricted free agency, I'd probably be like, go check it out. We got a deal here for you. We like you. If you personally can go cash in somewhere, hell yeah, go do it. But it's not going to be... With the Oilers. Not over two million bucks. Anyway, your thoughts on it. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. And uh yeah, we'll get to uh we'll get to these. Amos Moses says, I foresee the possibility of Kane being dealt to make up the cap room for next season. Resign Henrique Fogel and give Holloway a spot on the roster. Well, there's gonna be spots for Holloway on the roster next year, no matter what. We'll get to our qualifiers. Acticum's just having like a seven-minute pre-call chat with him. <laughs> uh, Fogel UFA, Henrique UFA, Yanmark UFA, Brown UFA, Perry UFA, Carrick UFA, and then DeHarnay, Stetcher, Pickard, those types of things. So that bottom six, they have a chance here. Like if you just look at all the guys who are UFAs, if you don't bring, let's say, they'll probably bring some of them back. But if you didn't bring any of them back, you've got McLeod in your bottom six. You got Derek Ryan for one more year in your bottom six. You got Dylan Holloway in your bottom six. So there's some there's some wiggle room there if you uh, if you want it. And uh, yes, uh, you guys are right. Um, oh, I thought you were talking about Tommy being late for the alumni skate that he was going down to, which he would have been, but he was working. Uh, Gager says, "Is Tardy Tommy at Hudson's tonight?" I uh, know he is not at Hudson's tonight. Sorry, Gager. Uh, not at Hudson's tonight for Tommy Gazzola. He will be hitting that up from uh, the, uh, what's he called? The Satellite Studios is where you'll get Tommy tonight for pre and post. Next one is a watch party on April 18th at Hudson's on White. So make plans to join the EST crew, Hudson's on White, April 18th. And uh, I'll just throw it out there right now. Hudson's is going to be our home for the playoffs as well. Tommy pre and post Hudson's all playoffs. So if you're planning on putting in a shift in the postseason, plan to do it with Edmonton sports talk at, uh, at Hudson's for the pre and the post. Uh, and look, I see that I bring Perry back do this. Perry wants back. We got a whole off season to do that. Hopefully that off season is like two months away. So we don't need to get into that right now. We do need to get to our qualifier right now. Zach Dickham, who do we have buddy? We got Ernie, Ernie, Ernie. All right. I don't even know if I know an Ernie. This is great. Ernie, congratulations, man. You've qualified. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who'd you bring with you, Ernie? Uh, probably my wife. Okay. Have you guys... Either that or send my wife and 
stay home and do something else. <laughs> have, have some time by yourself. This is this exactly. is a, this is the first time we've had anybody qualify and be like, you know what? I'll send my wife down to Vegas and I'll have the house to myself for a bit, which is also very exactly. uh, very rare to get. So either way, that's going to be a good time for sure. Have you guys done the Vegas thing, Ernie? Oh uh, yeah, I've been down there a couple times. Okay, all right, man. Well, good luck. You're one step closer to winning a trip for free. Thank you very much. All right, there you go. Congratulations to the Urn Man. Uh, gets his hands on another qualifier. Uh, this is Friday, so just to bring it up, we've got two more weeks of qualifying, week six and week seven, and then we give away the trip to Vegas with Fly Y-E-G. All right, that is going to do it for the oil stream today. Tommy will have pregame show tonight, 5.30 to get you set with YouTube. Trev taking you home after the game as well. Same thing uh, tomorrow, big one against the Vancouver Canucks. I will talk with you on Monday. Hammer those thumbs up whenever you're watching our content. We would love it. Have a good day.